Uh, thank you guys. So I want to thank Fusion real quick. They've been a, a great partner for us um, in terms of helping us through this process. And I'll talk a little bit about my role and sort of what I do at, at Texas. Uh, the other people I have to thank are our staff at Texas. So strength coaches, athletic trainers, sport coaches. Um, all of the stuff that I'm going to go over is completely meaningless without their buy-in. Um, and they've been awesome. So a lot of our strength staff is here today, again, to show sort of the support and the buy-in. That's what makes all of this stuff valuable. Uh, you know, having all of this information, you know, being able to collect data and none of it matters um, if you can't apply it and, and make it useful. Um, and they're certainly the ones that allow us to do that. So um, thank you to them. This is sort of my scope of work, um, what my job is. So we are definitely on the uh, applied side of things, which means my goal is not to do research. Uh, my goal is to collect our information and feed it directly back to our coaches, trainers, athletes. Uh, to try and get the best results we can. So that's sort of what motivates um, everything we do on a daily basis. There's also a big time factor, so we're going to make that information, um, turn it around. Uh, <coughs> everything we do is, is very timely in terms of um, the, the importance of the information. Everything changes so rapidly in college sports. We want to be mindful of our coaches' times and our athletes' times. So uh, that's how we structure things. Uh, so our Center for Applied Sports Science, which we uh, opened this last year, it's directly adjacent to our athletic training room, um, right above our, our strength and conditioning room. So it allows us to quickly grab athletes, bring them through, test them. Again, this is all meant to be um, feeding directly back to our athletes. So there's nothing in here that we that we can't do in 15 minutes or less, uh, minus VO2 takes a little bit longer. Um, we can basically run all of our athletes through our tests, uh, two athletes in a half hour block, um, and get them tested and out the door. So again, we've sort of set all of this up to be um, as efficient as possible with our athletes' times and collect as much information as we can to try and uh, help feed that back to them and make them better. Um, in terms of an information system, okay, how we put everything together, so we really try to get away from you know having an Excel sheet on Bobby and Susie's laptop and it's halfway across campus and nobody else has access to it. That's what SmarterBase has allowed us to do. It allows us to bring everybody on the same page so everybody has access to all of the same information. We're making decisions based on the same version of the truth, not what spreadsheet you might have versus what spreadsheet I might have. Everybody can log in and see the same information in real time um, and then make decisions for it. So it helps connect all of these different areas, our performance health and wellness area, um, it's all going to be interconnected with the same information. So again, it allows us to streamline the process, save everybody time, um, and, and try and get the best information out there to our coaches uh, to make informed decisions about our, our athletes' development um, and health. So I always put this up there as a reminder. This hangs in my office because, again, um, having all this data and stuff, you know, it's, it's sexy and we're going to you know, show some graphs and stuff that, that look pretty cool. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really about the people and about the relationships. So. Um, what I love about Smarter Base is it frees up my time to go to more lifting sessions, go to more practices, um, have those relationships with our coaches and trainers and, and student athletes, and not spend the whole time looking at Excel sheets and, and having to sit at my desk. Um, you know, we try and make things as smooth as possible, upload the data, everybody has their information, and then I can go work on those relationships. Let's have a conversation about the data. Uh, so to me, this really supplements those relationships. It, it doesn't detract from them. So, Again, it's, it's kind of all in how you use it. This is what our data integration looks like. So we break it down into four domains. So we have uh, wellness, performance, readiness, and then our data management. Uh, and that's how we integrate all the data. So best practice is gonna be an API connection. Um, so that's just a one-to-one -one connection where we're able to, to pull the data seamlessly. That makes everybody's life easier. Uh, we can also download um, and, and upload any Excel sheets or CSV into the system which is okay, and then the, the last method that we try and stay away from is manual entry. So that introduces a lot of error into your data, um, so we try and stay away from that. Most of that we've gotten away from manual entry, and, and we at least have a, a cell sheet we can upload. Uh, so we have two phases. Uh, I first started about 14 months ago. Phase one was wanting to integrate all of this information, so this did not all used to go to the same place. Now it does. Uh, that was sort of our big first step, and the smart base was you know, we definitely couldn't have done that without them and working with our vendors and, and uh, really trying to get this all in one place. Um, and now phase two is really working on that visualization side. So making the information look great to coaches, getting the login, um, really sort of drive the, the feedback through the site. So a um, couple things I just want to highlight real quick. So some uh, custom things that we've done, meal attendance. So SmartBase worked with our um, uh, training table. 
to be able to, every time our athletes swipe in, uh, we log that information as part of ACE now. So our nutritionists can go on and see how many meals you've eaten at our facility um, in the last week or the last few weeks. Um, our coaches can go in and say, okay, like why aren't you going to breakfast regularly? Like those sorts of things. So again, foster some of that accountability without having to have somebody sit there and check off whether or not you came in the door. So saving people time, automating some of those, some of those tasks. Uh, so that's one of the unique things that we did. We're asked to do things like polls <coughs> and and stuff like that on top of it. Uh, our why is that, you know, it, it creates more of me. Uh, we may not necessarily get to hire more staff, but what we can do is automate some of these processes to give me more time to, to spread myself out a little bit more. So uh, that's our why. And again, it, it always feeds back to uh, our great group of student athletes and coaches. We want to make sure that we are getting them all of the information and the tools they need. Uh, to go out and, and do what they do and win championships. So, uh, in terms of some of the visualizations, so Jason showed uh, one pretty similar to this. Uh, it's kind of one that we use. So this combines RPE and wellness. So again, a lot of you probably collect uh, RPE or wellness information. Particularly, wellness information is difficult because then it just kind of sits there. Uh, we've used this. We look at their history and then we score it uh, based on their Z score, and then we just flag them and put them into one of four categories. So we have ideal which is like, we want to push you, we want you to train more uh, today, so let's add some volume, add some sets and reps. Uh, sufficient is uh, as prescribed. We have insufficient, which is like, maybe let's take a look at what they're doing today, and then we have consult, which is, uh, we definitely want to make sure that a strength coach or an athletic trainer has a conversation with you about how things are going, because you're significantly outside of your normal um, in terms of some of the wellness parameters. Uh, so another look at wellness, um, our athletic trainers start to use this a lot in terms of sore body area lists. So we can target uh, things like foam rolling, uh, mobility work, that sort of stuff based on how the team is responding. So again, you go from a blanket approach of, hey, maybe you're working on shoulders today, but nobody's shoulders are really that sore. So this allows you to be more targeted with your time and your approach of, we wanna go after these specific areas because this is what our athletes are, are telling us they need. Uh, and then same thing we can look at it from a a team view and then dive in if we need to, of, okay, how's the team sleeping, how sore are they, um, all of those sorts of things. Uh, Performance-wise, so this is gonna be essentially our, our KPI dashboard. So these are all of our key performance indicators. Um, we've been able to create a dashboard where they're all in one spot. Again, we use Z-scores um, to be able to show you the trend. So we're gonna take their, their latest testing number, we're gonna compare it to their last four testing numbers, and we're gonna tell you which direction that athlete is moving in that category. Uh, so if I want to see how our team's doing in terms of gaining lean mass, I can look at the lean mass category, go down and say, hey, we're, we're doing pretty well. Our, our strength coaches are doing a great job. Our nutritionists are doing a great job. We're putting on the lean mass that we want to. Okay, uh, you know, we can look at athlete one at the top and see which categories they're doing well in, which categories they're not doing well in, and then adjust their training to help them out. So um, really go after some targeted training, adjust their, their weakest link, so to speak. Uh, so, in our team performance categories, these are great visualizations to show two things. One, we still use Excel, so it's not like because we have SmarterBase, Excel completely goes away. Excel is still a great tool. Uh, SmarterBase allows us to enhance it. So these would be live updating Excel sheets. So we link these Excel sheets to SmarterBase, and we can now pull historical data, um, and we can automatically update those Excel sheets and those reports with the latest information in SmarterBase. Uh, additionally, SmartBase sort of does all the heavy lifting in terms of like calculations um, and again all the historical information. So like you're not going to crash Excel all the time because you have a hundred different tabs open and there's so much data in there and you can't really handle it. You can use what Excel does best and enhance it with what SmartBase does best. Uh, so this particular report pulls through you know polar practice information. Um, it has resting metabolic rate information that we took from some of our players and also their DEXA information. So again, you're sort of getting all of that information uh, put into SmarterBase and then combined into one report. Whereas normally you would go to maybe three different laptop computers, pull three different Excel files and have to manually try and put them together. Uh, we can do that with a click of a button. So really streamlining. Uh, the other example there is, is looking at like some catapult information. We overlay that with force plate information um, and then also looking at our movement screen. So basically what we were able to find are positive correlations between um, in this case, our soccer athletes, the higher the player load total they had for the season, uh, the more dysfunction that they had um, in their postseason movement screen. So we were able to draw some really cool cor cross correlations between different monitoring. Um, and that's sort of when you really turn the corner and you realize that you're either on to something or you're not, is when different technologies, different pieces can 
uh, interact and feedback with each other. Uh, from an individual standpoint, so we all know when it comes to our athletes, it all comes back to an end of one. So we always want to look at um, the individuals and how they're doing, particularly if they're doing really, really well or, or really poorly. We definitely want to address those issues. Um, so some Omega Wave examples that, again, Omega Wave has an API, so they do the test, feeds right into SmarterBase, and it works great. Uh, we'll look at some of our movement screen information in the middle, so where are some of the trouble areas that we want to try and address with our athletes, whether it be with corrective exercises, mobility work, uh, any of that. And then our latest USG information, so we test a lot of urine, um, especially <laughs> if, any, if anybody comes up with a better way to do that, like that's going to help a lot of people out, um, but especially with our outdoor sports, like every morning um, we're testing urine, but the great part about that is so we upload that into SmarterBase and then we generate alerts based off of that. So if you fall outside of our parameters, our nutritionists get a text or an email, here's the list of guys who are not hydrated and they can go and grab those guys and have that interaction before they leave the facility. Uh, so again, it's, it's not just collecting and sitting on data, it's how can we make it work for us and how can we make it make a difference in our, in our uh, student athletes. Uh, this is sort of my favorite way to look at wellness in terms of individuals. So we're going to score everything based on who are our highest average scores, so the people who are doing really well within the group, and then the lowest average scores. So um, if you show up on the low average scores list, you know, a strength coach, an athletic trainer, somebody needs to go have an interaction with that athlete because, again, they're way outside of normal. Something's going on. Um, again, use this information to drive those interactions. Don't substitute it. Uh, this is sort of the moral of the story. And then, again, targeted information so um, like with this athlete they're not really concerned about soreness so we're not going to waste time addressing that we're going to talk about how can we reduce your stress do you need to go maybe see one of our uh, counselors you know those sorts of things you're having some issues with fatigue like do we maybe need to do a blood test and follow up with medical like is there an iron deficiency if you're a female athlete um, all of those things we can start to get clues as to what each athlete uh, is, is going through and then how to make those interactions um, and then again, some of our wellness reporting side comment. So comments, uh, comment sections in your wellness is awesome. Um, and if you put them in there, you have to read them and then you have to engage. So we get all sorts of wild stuff in the comment section. But uh, if you come and address the athlete with that, they know that you've read it. They know that that information is valuable and then they're going to fill it out next time and they're going to be honest. So really make sure that uh, if you put a comment section in, you follow up. Uh, Individual performance monitoring. So this is, to me, one of the best things that we do in terms of adjusting uh, individual athletes' loads. Um, a lot of times what we'll do, we'll look at uh, weekly loads or the small picture is acute to chronic and just adjusting individual athletes based on that. We'll give our coaches a list of, uh, we predict at the beginning of the week how the week is gonna go for each athlete based on the number of sessions and what they've done the past few weeks. And we'll say, hey, this group, you know, if you can spare their legs a little bit, it would probably help them out this week. This group is good. And then we have our undertrained group where we want to make sure that if there's an injury and we have to pull someone in who hasn't been playing, they need to be ready to go. So our coaches get a list of like, hey, th these guys can have extra work afterwards. Like make sure that they're continuing to train so they don't fall into that detraining category. Um, again, sports science gets a bad name because it's like, oh, do less, do less. We really try and flip that on its head and like we, if there's going to be that scenario, we also want there to be the scenario of these are the kids who need to do more and continue their development. Um, that, that injury balance is always two-sided. Uh, last piece, yep, getting there. Uh, so the EMR system, this is what we're getting ready to roll out June 1. So we were a little bit opposite of Jason. We started with performance and we're now working uh, towards the medical side. Uh, that's going to roll out June 1, which will be great for all of us. Now our athletic trainers at the click of a button will be able to see how they're doing wellness and workload wise and did that contribute to the injury that they might have. Um, again, sharing that information, one click reporting for coaches in terms of injury reports, who's available for practice, who has limitations. Again, all of those things are available in one spot. You go log in, you have all the information that you need. Uh, again, same version of that, we can run total records. So do you have an ankle injury? Do you have a knee injury? How many of those did we have across UT athletics in 2017, 2018? We can generate those things with a click of a button instead of having to piece things together from different people. Um, that allows us to evaluate what we're doing well and what we really need to work on as a department. So, um, yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm sure they'll make these slides available for you. Um, I'll be around all day. I'm a, like, I check my inbox and clear it daily. So, like, email me. I'm happy to share all this stuff because, again, 
you know, we, we do some pretty cool stuff and I'm happy to share it because it's, it's not this that makes it work, it's the staff and the people around you and your organization's willingness to buy in and use it. So um, we're, we definitely want to push everybody else in that direction. I think it just makes all of us better. So thank you.